why not? What else do we have that's more important to do than this? Yeah. And it's just an investment of time and energy. We have so little face-to-face. -face. This is the only way I think that we develop a, 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 what I consider the healing cooperative community. We show the society how it works. We illustrate it. We do it. We model it. What a, a healing cooperative that thing community looks be, like and works like. That's a mic. Is that oh, down? it doesn't matter. So, you know, when you were talking, I wasn't like ignoring you, but I have friends in Long Beach. And they're like aggressive and sort of. And I was trying to find it. I did find her. She's really fancy. That's one of her things. Mm -hmm. She takes a picture from Memory Time magazine. She has that. And um, she, she's like totally into this. And I've been getting ideas from her. How they do things. Well, just get right to it. She's Tell me what you think. Stay at the well, I don't want to talk about her. I want to talk about you. If you can tell me what she's thinking, tell me. That's what I'm trying to go now. What's going on? They actually go to the college. She's at the college, and they have a table there every single day. There's a table there. They've gone. They've gone to the ports. You know where the ships come in. Yeah. They've like gone everywhere where they can stop something. There've been marches in Long Beach, but everyone kind of ignores Long Beach. They think you know Long Beach is Orange County, you know Long Beach is L.A. Whatever. The crap, but there's actually been a lot of stuff going on there. And I worked for, um, well, I did work and I also volunteered for the Battered Women's Shelter of Long Beach for eight years. And I started as a volunteer and went over to um, Outreach. I got employed. And every single thing that happened anywhere, um, I went to every single college when they had like a, some kind of a drive or something. So I brought, they had tables set up. They had a table for me already. Brought all the brochures, everything. I sat there with a chair. Um, I went to Jewish Community Center. I gave a lecture at Cal State Long Beach. And they asked, "Help me understand what you're trying to tell me." I'm, I'm just. I think I don't know to, what you're telling. You just have to, you know. Getting here is nice. This is a good idea. But I mean, direct action. Yeah, direct action. And it, uh, the students yeah. are always a good start. Mm -hmm. The students are always, not always, but they're they're really getting into things. Mm -hmm. And if maybe there were more like outreach. Things at the schools and the colleges. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Because they're and you the hear ones, about it all the time. They're the ones that they're are going to move. GAs, we're going to this high school. We're going to this yeah. college. We're going to here. We're outreaching. We're sending out things. It's not like nobody's thought about it. Yeah. Well, no, it's a good idea. It's you just not. Think. I think the message that we're sending is incoherent. That it's it's hard to sell because we have 50 different messages and 50 different messages say that. and 50 different emphases. And this is what we lack, and this is what we're trying to build in this group and in the strategy meeting that's coming up, is some kind of coherent, cohesive message that we can present to, rather than this scattershot chaos, which just confuses people, and they pick and choose what they want out of that and call it Occupy, because we don't really know who Occupy is. Well, we're still struggling to find out what that is. And I don't think there's something wrong with that process. Okay, I'm sorry, yes. Well, it's kind of, though, like what she's saying, how, you know, I mean, that, that's kind of kind of what I'm thinking, too. In a lot of other cities, they're a lot more proactive. Like, in Riverside, they're taking on Walmart. In L.A., they're doing, uh, they're doing Occupy Skid Row in solidarity with the homeless. You know, which I guess we kind of did that here for a while, but there's kind of a... I don't know. I no. guess like some of the the regular residents of the park don't really trust us or something. I don't know. We haven't made but. a huge policy to end homeless in Sacramento and in the United States and in the world. We haven't said this is a bottom line thing. Hunger and homelessness ought to be ended as soon as possible. No waiting, yeah. no explanations, no whatever. Get to it. Get it done. Because this is without that, we're an uncivilized country. Exactly. We're an inhumane country. And I can't stand it. I can't stand walking around in a country that I'm embarrassed of and that I'm ashamed of. Thank so I say, you. why do Thank we not you. do something for these people? Well, we have multi-billionaires, a thousand yep. multi-billionaires with more money than they know what to do with, and yet we still have hungry and homeless 
that's an obscenity. And that gets to, you know, how, okay, how we were talking about, you know, no, we're, we're totally peaceful, we don't destroy property, it's we don't, right. but, but like the, the wrath and rage oh, that, you know, what you're talking about, because like up, up the hill, up in Placerville and up in these conservative areas, it's like, like our message practically just falls flat. You talk to somebody in front of, in front of Walmart in Placerville and they're going to, and they're going to purse their lips and puff themselves up and go, I believe in capitalism. If you have what you have, then you should get to keep it and, and it should not be taken away for those low okay. lives who don't but want to work. we're not going to let and that all these, and it's just, stop and us. They're, they're so they're, they're so small-minded and they're so and they're so shallow and they're so just so okay. in love and with their own for what? Read. And therefore what? And therefore, it pisses me off. It makes okay, it, it makes that. me want to. It makes me want to punch one. If of them. you don't use that anger but, constructively uh, <laughs> to to resolve the problems, then all it does is eat you alive inside. That it doesn't go away. If you and I go home and I go home at night. Like all you do is eat yourself up inside. Uh, literally, and I get so pissed off. See these calluses on my fingers. And try and persuade these are from us fighting to feel the same way you do. And just I don't think shaking you really with want that. Do you want us all to feel the same frustration and anger that you do? And no. you won't be satisfied until we're all right <laughs> there with you. He does fight his fear. He goes, but it's like... Because I otherwise, mean, just, what are you trying to persuade us of? To be... No, to be hopeless, not to, to be... To give up? To say, oh, it's hopeless? You, no, you can't deal no, with these people? No. Why talk to them? No, I I'm not saying... That. I'm not saying that at but all. I'm just hear. saying that... I'm just saying that, you know, I come down here once a week. I come to this meeting. Sometimes I go to the General Assembly. I follow the occupies of other cities on the computer, you know, and I, and I feel, like, hopeful that there's an awakening taking, pl taking place. And then I go out onto the streets of little old Placerville and hear the same fox-fed, narrow-minded bullshit. Well, what do you expect? And it's what like, are you expecting? And it just, it's like the, you know... Isn't that self-defeating? Isn't that whole process self-defeating and self-destructive? Where's the redemptive part of that whole process? I don't see it. All it does is kind of destroy you and kind of suck everybody into a black hole around you. We have to believe that we can make a difference. Otherwise, we might as well pack it up and go home. Are you trying to persuade us to just pack it up? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Difference. Not at all. No, no, no. That's not it at all. What it, that's, that's what not I'm it at all. It's just I, I, I am expressing frustration at our kind of oh, how can I say this? Like our lack of penetration into the mainstream Amen. consciousness. Amen. And, and that, you know, it's it. And then here and there, like, I do petitions, you know, getting signatures for ballot initiatives. And we've got we've got a bunch of good ones this time. We've got a bunch of ones that really are Occupy friendly, like tax millionaires. And, you know, and I get, and as I'm, you know, as I'm, as I'm pitching this and I'm getting heckled and I'm hearing the same old, yeah. the same old yeah. fox fed oh. bullshit over and over and I'm and I'm meeting people that are you know blue collar people like me but that are totally going against their own interests okay. and and for the one percent and that are that are insulting and shitty about it as if you know as if to say oh you're not okay. really an American yeah. so, you're not really so, you know so and what do you and expect what do you expect if you can't tolerate that if they get to you if they can mobilize your anger and paralyze you with anger, they win this. They've got you. They've got I'm you not saying control. I'm paralyzed. Well, I'm I, just I saying. I am suggesting that it, in I'm three, aggravated. Weeks, three weeks, this same feeling has been within you unchanged, unaffected since we got here. Because that time, same the feeling. The same rant, the same anger, the same justification, the same feeling that this is what we just don't understand it. If it's you not, say it one more time, then we're going to understand no, it's not how that, helpless we are. I'm not saying what's that what's going we're on. helpless. I'm, I'm just it. saying just that it, it seems it. like... I don't know how to say... I mean, you know, I don't want to take up too much of the group's time or anything. Well, I guess it just seems to. like these people that, you know, that in many ways are just... You know, good, decent people that work for a living and everything, but they are so misled, and it's and they're 
their analytical brains are so turned off that it's you know a, it's it's hard to reach them. Okay. It's hard to Did reach you hear them. It's hard what to. I was saying when I said we go to the Arden Fair Mall. We bring 50, 40 people. We sit down there. We say anybody who wants to find out about Occupy, come on down. We'd love to talk to you. And the assholes that you're talking about are going to sit in the background going, and we yeah. will ignore them. But the people who come down and say, well, we want to know what you're really all about, those are the people we want to talk to. And I do not give a flying F about how many people out there think that we're rapists and killers and socialist monsters and whatever they call I do not <laughs> give a flying F what they think. I am interested in yeah, those well, I don't people care what who they say, either. I don't know quite what they're about. Some of the what they say kind of sounds, but then I hear this and I hear that, and I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know what they stand for. I don't know what they really mean. I hear all sorts of different things. Well, if we can't send a cohesive picture, a cohesive message, a, a transparent message, that people can just go, oh, 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 I see. Oh, I see. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Well, I don't know why we didn't say so before, but we're saying it now. And we're inviting you into this process to become part of a community instead of part of an, a war game that's going on constantly in this country. So to have a yeah, broad doing? message... I mean, I, what I think of is the is the statement that Occupy has on on its pamphlet, you know, as the broad message, um, and and but everything has a specific, you know, everything comes down to specifics too. Well, when it comes and down to grievances, what, when they say, "What are our forty two grievances?" Well, I I want to go beyond the grievances to what is our vision of a better. America, what is, how do we see it operating? What is different about our vision and what we have now? And, and what do you care about? And what, you know, explain it to me, what you think has to change. Not just the money is bad and the Congress is bad and, you know, all these things are terrible. Tell me what you want. And I think there is a vague progressive vision amongst all the people in Occupy. But we're fractured and wandering and confused and looking and seeking and searching and testing and and that's the process we have to go through now and find ourselves to find who we are. So if we were, I mean, do you have a, an idea at this point if, you know, tomorrow we were to go, we were to have a, um, you know, fair-sized group of people and go to the Arden Fair Mall, how we would present ourselves? Would, would we be, you know, asking people what they think yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pulling them into the group and say, hey, what about what do you think about this inequality thing with the one percent having all the money and the ninety nine percent? And ask her and ask him and ask this young eight year old here that seems real interested and show him how we work by pulling people into our community, asking for good ideas, asking for ideas on how you could be part of the solution too. We're not here to hammer you with come follow us down the road to whatever, we want you to be part of our community and to help us heal this country. Because no one thinks that this is the way it ought to be. They just think, well, there's nothing you can leave and do about it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do. Some of them do think that's the way it ought to be. Yes, that's the that's, that's the problem. That's well, yeah, the, ones, the one that's percent the... are doing great. There were, there were too many people that are... That that don't realize that they are that there are too many people that don't realize that they're one of us, but they they're they're sympathizing against their own best interest. Oh, absolutely. And so can we help them? That's that is the question, isn't it? That is the burning question. I do think with a lot of people, however they present, whether they present as all angry and and you know occupy. Um, communists or whatever um, when you know people I mean I find in my own experience um, I may uh, get uh, huffy about somebody saying something but I do go home and think about it later and um, and people do that and that's how people's points of view change I think and you know if you even if somebody is is nasty if you just say something kind of 
factual and calm and something that they connect to, they may not let you know that they're thinking about it, but they do go home. A lot of people do go home and think about it later, and it, and it moves their thinking a little bit. We can turn them on or we can turn them off. Yeah. I think we've shown we have equal capacity to do both. And we are looking for ways to turn people on to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's why we're trying here not to insult people back. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite sayings is, uh, the favorite saying seems to be, get a job. Yeah. And I like to say, this is my job. <laughs> it's a volunteer thing, but uh -huh. still. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is my job. Yeah. And I'm doing a hell of a job. Come on down and talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> Speak up real loud. A so lot of my friends are aware into this. And they asked me what was going on in Sacramento, and I had a really hard time finding this. So finally I just went on to the website to put in Occupy Sacramento. Then I got the answer from Sarah. Sarah, Sarah right? In the press? They both put comments back, you know, with me, and I was the General Assembly. Sometimes in groups do things like this. I mean, this is a real good thing. Everybody's in one place or there, but... Sometimes you have to have like one big group like this, and like little groups occupying corners, like maybe three or four people in like strategic spots. Like why isn't anybody in front of Jerry, uh, Jerry Brown's apartment or at the state house or before the freeway entrances or where people are going to see you or when they're coming into town, you know? It's not, not to try to, to conquer, I mean, you just have to be it. Plus, maybe a larger sign, maybe a sign that's plain up so when people go by, they don't have to look down the sign, but just see there's a sign that's four feet high that says Occupy Sacramento, you know, and invite them in. Not to make them drive by and come by and just say, well, you know, there's a bunch of homeless people sitting there, because they have no idea, and they can't read the signs. Generate visibility. Yeah. And um, Long Beach, they have a huge sign. They have a, it must be about 10 feet long and just a general strike and it's about this big. And they carry it like a banner. And they almost do parades with it. And, like I said, going to do the can, so you under, can you understand my um, focus on developing a coherent message yeah, so that definitely. not only do we do things, but we say things coherently and clearly and passionately so that it reaches people. And if we use the shotgun approach, 500 different issues, 500 different places, 500 different offices, 500 different people pulling their direction to say, this is maybe where we should go. We get, we get this wandering mishmash of people saying, well, we don't really know what you stand for. And that's why I am talking about a vision group. That's why I'm talking about focusing on what's our long-term goal. How would we like America to look? How would we like the system to be different than it is now? Not how awful it is now, or what's wrong with it now, but if we could have it the way we want it, how would it be? That would be the guiding star for our actions. But if we have no vision, then we just continue the shooting shotguns in all directions, hoping we're going to hit something, hoping that that'll spark something. I just don't think that that's coherent enough. That's not clear enough in the day of media penetration okay i think we we all share i mean you know on some unspoken and spoken level we do all share a clear vision we do share a vision of a country where where everybody has a home everybody has access to health care um, you know, where, we, where we're developing clean energy and not polluting the environment, where we're not sending our, our troops on military actions in, you know, wherever. Uh, where, I mean, you know, but the thing is, when we're trying, it's like the way I see it, there are, you know, there are like, and I, I hate to split it into like us and them, but there are like enlightened people and there are numb heads. <laughs> And when we're trying to get through to the, to the, to the, we can't, it's so hard to like distill it down into a, into a, like a, you know, a real clear sales pitch because it is so much more complicated what than you that. Did there was very close to it. I mean, you hit three spots that in a conversation or in a direction, people would go, yeah, yeah, 
and yeah. And as long as you didn't confuse it with five different things and get angry at somebody and throw something, blah, 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 they would get it. And they would, like she says, they'd go home, maybe think about it. Or maybe they'd say, yeah. you know, I think I know what Occupy is about. This guy kind of yeah. hit me to it, and it, it, it only took him 12 words. He didn't give me a lecture that lasted 15 minutes and a rant about how the people in Oda, he just laid it out for me. I believe we can lay it out for the American people in such a way that they go, oh, so that's what you're saying. Why didn't you say case. so? Well, I think, are you not talking about two different, two different avenues, two different visioning? <laughs> like, one type of visioning you're talking about is creating an explanation to the question, well, what does Occupy represent? What do you mean? And then I'm also hearing you say, Let's, as a society, actually articulate what we want in terms of our good, the good society. Those are two different ways to spend the time here. So I'm wondering which question do you What's want the to... distinction? I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Well, one's telling people. The other one sounds more elicitive, meaning you're eliciting vision out of people, whether it gets recorded or not. The first one is you want to record this small group's vision so that it helps give a the five minute bullet point list. I wish of what this were we had a thousand people here. Right, I wish the entire Occupy was here. I understand, but I'm I'm hearing two different goals, so I'm wondering what are, are they incompatible? Are they uh, mutually? They're related. But I mean, you can't do both. They're like something that we should. Do one and not the other, or? Well, one would be, like, shorter term, you know, to help answer the question, what does Occupy mm -hmm. stand for? And the other one I seems to be more, like, longer term <laughs> and much more elicitive, meaning it would be much more allowing anyone to to help them get in touch with, with that part and that soul of what we expect and what we thought this country would be when we were, you know, well, born. I think Aren't we proposing an invitation when we do this thing like go to the Yard Mall and say, sit down and talk with us, be part of our group, find out what we're about, give me some ideas, have you got any ideas? Include everyone into the community, make them realize that they are part of Occupy, that they are sympathetic with Occupy, that they really believe in Occupy if they knew what we stood for. Well, maybe if you could make it, when you put a banner up, you could just, you could just say Occupy Sacramento, you just need to say right on it, what is Occupy Sacramento? And people will come to you and they're, they're going to ask you what, you know when you do art, have you ever done graphic design or art? What you do is you do thumbnails. You might actually come up, somebody comes up with an advertising idea and they want such and such and such and such. So what you do is you might do 20. But you don't give that to the customer. You only narrow it down between three and five because it gets too confusing. Because then he's going to say, "Oh yeah, I'm thirty. This, this, we'll go to this, we'll go to that, we'll go to that." You get them in there with a major, major things that you're after. And what she's saying is, "Wait, I think um, then you can let them know of other things. You know what's going on. You know because you don't want to confuse There's a sign here. And it's almost confusing. You got to get these." The headline out there. When we get the headline, we bring them in. Then all of a sudden, right. oh, absolutely, you need absolutely. You also need to get specialists. You need to have people that know. You can't. Every single person can't know every single thing really well. Absolutely. So you might be great at one, two, or three items. You might be great at two or three items. You and all of us. You know, you can go on, and and you can refer them back to that person. Okay, that's what they're doing. You actually have to have a structure. You know. Well, do we believe in our community? Well, do we believe that our community can come up with answers to these questions? Just the Occupy Sacramento. We can't be all of them. All of the Occupies are kind of distinct efforts to define themselves. That no, no two seem to be the same. We borrow a lot from each other, we trade a lot of ideas from each other, but we don't become one another because each one of those occupies is looking. Like I say, I watch CNN, I watch... You'd be surprised how many are people are doing 
how many occupations are doing just this. They're getting together, they're getting in a big group and say, what are we about? Some people are saying, maybe we shouldn't be Occupy anymore. We're going to have to move beyond Occupy. Some people are saying we should be anarchists. Some people are saying they're working it out face to face in big groups and trying to define who they are, come to some conclusions, who they are. And then they will offer it to the greater community of all the other occupies, and we'll put all of those things together in a great tapestry, and eventually come up with what Occupy is all about. But basically it is the functioning community, learning to operate as a community in a GA, in a working group, instead of these isolated little individuals sending messages to each other to act, to learn to act together as a community to make this a town hall democracy instead of a representative democracy, I think. Yeah, that, that we should like be moving that. towards this town hall and away from some guy up there supposedly representing my ideas and not <laughs> doing a very good job of it. They should be calling down to the town hall, well, what do you want? And we talk for a while and we say, we decide this. Now, I know that's fanciful, but I think that that's what we ought to be selling and showing how it works. Drastic by inviting people into the community. The entire, drastic reform of the entire political process. And the whole system well, of about, government and the whole system of economics. And short term. You have lo the long yeah. term. And then what are you going to do in the near term? Are you going to go after, you know, get single payer and work with right. and try to get yeah. the legislation? Or are you going to go after Citizens United and and, and yeah. at least get the Disclose Act and work... That's what you they're know, saying We make a list of priorities. One, two, three, four, five, and six, maybe. Or maybe the dirty dozen, the 12 issues that unite us. Or, I don't know, but I think we could come up with them and say, it's a matter of choosing amongst these at this time, for this point, to make this strategy. We can come up and we can all... And then we're going to move to this, or, you know, but we will know what the, the dirty dozen are, and everybody will say, yeah, these are the things that make my heart thump. It's not just an idea, but it's something that gets me going. And all 12 of those, I could put everything aside and work on any one of them, and I'd be fine. But today, we're going after putting those banksters in jail instead of giving them bonuses, wanting to see them in jail, period. That's what we're doing today. I'm so sorry. Morgan. Petition on that right now, going around like, the Break Up Bank of America. Have you signed that yet? Oh, I'm I'm just pulling stuff yeah, out of the air. Is one. But you know, I think we could. I think that's not impossible. I, yeah. I don't think that that's asking something that's impossible, but difficult. I admit. But what do we have in this strategy meeting for if it isn't to do, to try and do that, yeah. to take our own pulse and. It's like at a big event, they've been planning for like a month, and it's trying to bring a bunch, a bunch of occupiers together. Like, especially, I, I'm feeling that a lot of people have been sort of dropped out after who were really strong the first month, and then sort of lost interest as we, yeah. <laughs> trans, you know, evolved. Um, are hoping to come back, and we're hoping to sort of, similar to this kind of discussion, trying to figure out so, some uh, things we want to, directions we want to choose. It's really exciting, like, more visual impacts. I mean, even if you had to have, like, you have your signs, right? You just said uh, 10, 12 different items, right? You, you, for the strategy yeah. session, it's, it's, about, it's yeah. about focusing on, on doing, you know, doing the work and executing for the Occupy. What I thought that this session was about was about helping to, I mean, I've heard you say it a few times, it's great to, for reform, and it's great to actually you know, charge forth and actually create the changes, but changes to what? And so the strategy group isn't focusing on that, but this group is more what I thought, that's why I came back today, was focusing on what does a, what does a fairness system look like rather than a justice system? And what does a, what would it be like? What would education be like? Didn't have to but don't we, we also go to the I, I, love, I love thinking about that because I 
to me, the more we think about those things and not, and like if say we're leapfrogging over how we get there, say this group focuses on we're there and actually puts ourselves in that space, that's like a prayer. And when Indeed. people pray Indeed. in a group like that Indeed. and think about things that are really beautiful and kind, it's an amazing, amazing thing that we do for ourselves larger movement, you know, just, just, and for the whole I, they, they handed out a sheet that describes what they're going to do in that strategy mission, and there's a whole section on vision, developing a vision for Occupy. They acknowledge us, they acknowledge us in the last TA, they acknowledge that vision is an aspect of what we should be doing, and they're inviting us to participate in it. And that's, and I told him in GA, we are down for that. We are going to be represented, the people in the vision group, and certainly myself, are going to be speaking up about this. And that's not to say, here's the vision. It's to say, we need the discussion for as long as it takes. But we're not, we're not going to go to the, what do we do next? <laughs> I think we can return? chew gum and, and you know, uh, walk, walk at the same time. We can do a lot of different things at the same time. But if it distracts us from actually forming that cohesive vision, then I say, let's put the specifics aside and, and get the center established. One, um, one thing I think, I mean, I, I, as, as it's evolved, like I've been an activist so long and I, I always have a couple issues and my friends are activists on different issues, and we sign some of each other's petitions, but, but I feel like with Occupy starting, we're getting a lot more sort of, uh, I call it like a fungal net, you know, like a, it's, it's the, you know, the connective tissue between all these issues, mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, and it's really yeah. helping educate each other, you know, it's, it's very good collaborative education. Um, and it's, it's, I think no matter what, like, even if, even if, like, this fizzles out and involves into other things, like, that tissue has been so important and overdue that I think that's already a win. Um, <laughs> and I think the, that aspect of direct democracy is also, like, one of our, like, we, we might be able to point to that and say, like, that is, like, this is a core example. Like, we are, we are proving with our practice that we can do it better than the people we represent. And that's something, like, that the, you know, the other side should agree with. It, like, I, there's a great, um, in, like, this sort of set of images on, circling online with a Venn diagram with Occupy Wall Street and the Tea Party. And in the middle is... Uh, I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> Overlap issues. Yeah. yeah. In the middle, it's like both both of these agree that, you know, corporations are colluding with government unfairly to, to fuck the rest of us over. Mm -hmm. And the Tea Party yeah. thinks that the government's too power and, and the Occupy thinks corporations are too powerful. I think yes. both are true. Both, I exactly, think government exactly. and right. so they're both true. You know, like, yeah. I, I think we've lived in, in you know, uh, what rounds off to a fascist state for a while. Just like uh -huh. the level of collusion with, with corporations and government and yeah. ownership, like literal ownership <laughs> is well, just to me. Right. Yeah, so, so maybe somewhere in there, like, we can, if, if we had to choose one message, maybe it's just that, like, our representation is no longer, you know, it's no longer representative, and and that's something that we're proving in our in our actions. Like what actions that all occupies are taking are general assemblies, and mm -hmm. and, and so that's one thing we can definitely. I think, uh -huh. Uh -huh. We can model mm -hmm. the the change that mm -hmm. we want to see the world in the world. You know, one time and I, I strongly concur with that. I mean, that's the most powerful message we can give is by showing us modeling democracy in action, working, and inclusive, pulling everybody in, egalitarian, nobody's running the show, everybody's taking part. And very few people say, oh, that sucks, I don't want to play that. I want some guy telling me everything to do and telling me to shut up. That's the way I like it. Hardly anybody wants to play that way. They just don't think that it's allowed and it can't yeah, be done. Yeah. It's we're, a blind spot. For we're testing out things that people say, oh, well, I didn't think you were allowed to even think that. Well, yeah, you're allowed to think anything. You can yeah. contemplate anything, and there's no law against it. That's what the freedom of uh, speech is all about. Mm -hmm. And we are allowed to go places that people just haven't even been thinking about up until now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a long time ago, there you, I was an actor. And what we would, one of the things Sorry, we did... What's that? Act up? Act up. Yeah, there's coalitions only. Uh, 
early gay yeah. rights. Yeah, oh, oh. and we actually went, um, and we got on TV. We did, it was a larger group, not too much larger. We went to like the cable stations with our signs and banners. We went to some of the radio, we had things, and they had to look at us. Yeah. And I mean, the cable people, uh, uh, the cable stations, they actually came out and they agreed with us. They came out and they brought us drinks and stuff and came out. Yeah, yeah. But we were on TV the whole time, so everyone was in San Diego. It's kind of like one of those little places, Absolutely. like Sacramento. They'll be able to do anything. I believe you know? in that process. And, yeah. you know, we had to do that. And then when I did the things with George Bush, we actually did a huge march once in front of CNN in Hollywood. We started right in front of CNN. It was um, Amoeba Records, CNN. And Gandhi's grandson was there. He gave the, the main <laughs> speech. And we walked all the way down Hollywood Boulevard, came back, came back up to CNN again. It was all over the TV. Look how the, much you accomplished, too. Mm -hmm. The ACT UP started a wave that mm -hmm. never stopped and is still still rolling and is still changing this country dramatically by that in the face you're not we're not going away anymore you're going to have to look us in the eye and tell us that's crap well what happened was there's a lot of infighting all things, things well of course there was the but in the end yeah it's say what i did i did merchandising and so what i would do is i would i was dealing in san francisco a lot to act up there and i was getting um the photo ready um art for the t-shirts. And we were able to use their photo ready material and add the big act up logo and put our own thing onto it. And we actually produced our own t-shirts and we sold them. And you know, people bought, we sold every single one of them. I was, there was another guy that when I sold everything, I kept their thing and did finance. And um, Well, small, don't we need you as part of the process? Shouldn't you be part of the process? All we can ask is, you be part of the process. You can't just get everybody to kind of sign on and say, okay, we'll do what he says. Mm -hmm. What we need is you making the case and bringing your experiences forward. That's how the community works. Yeah, we came on in a positive way. And I think can. everybody here has something to offer of just that nature. And it's not just persuasion, it's being there and, you know, experiencing the whole community support saying, yes, I'm part of that. That's part of us. That, how are we going to say this? How are we going to make this a part of what what we are and who we are and the and the message that we're giving? I'm just I'm so preoccupied in having a coherent, meaningful, moving message that comes out of Occupy and people say, yeah, damn, right. A really yeah, good message. Right, right. You know, we, when I did the, the women's shelter thing, I would go every registration at every college in the local area. I went to different places like that, and I had my table, my brochures. A lot of people would walk by me, like, well, that's all me. But, you know, you know, you would say, like, maybe you know someone, and you wouldn't give them all of the, the things going on, but a lot of people would stop, and you could explain, you know, okay, 70% of the women come go back to their, uh, or male, whatever. There's only actually, at that time, there was only two male um, domestic shelters in the country. It was Dallas and San Francisco. Dallas probably has the largest gay uh, population in the country. Yeah. And um, that's kind of surprising. Yeah. Long Beach is bigger than San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco. And um, but we were a real positiveness. We went out there, you know, we just smiled. We had brochures when we did it. And we had the table. And in front of the table, we always had a banner in front of the table that was large. So you could see it from far away. You could see it from part of the campus. Okay, okay. I got, I've got it. I got yeah. it. I get what you're saying, but I'm not sure what you're saying that we're not getting. I mean, I don't, I don't see that here yet. I mean, I, I said, but I told you before, I had a really hard time finding this. And there's two times I actually saw you guys. I, I came down here, well, here when you were doing the thing up there last year. And then one day, a couple weeks ago, some friends of mine came down from San Francisco and we were talking about it. And we're going over to Sal and some restaurant. And, the, and my friend Rebecca was like, oh, there's, there's Occupy. There's your Occupy thing. And that was it. Okay. And there were like seven people out here. Okay. And do you think that we're saying, no, we kind of want to stay real small. We don't really want to have any impact on Sacramento because that wouldn't work. I think the question is, how do we get this small group multiplied, broadened, 
and it's by tapping into the resources of the community, using everybody's, yours, mine, everybody's ideas on how to do it. No one in person is going to come in and say, okay, step aside, I, I got it, I got this, I got this. All of us together are going to get it together, and, but not without sitting down and getting it together. And that's the frustrating part about this, is that people just say, well, maybe we can just tippity type messages to each other across and, and we can just avoid getting together. And I'm saying, no, you can't. You have to face to face it. You have to be out here being the community in order to act like a community, in order to function like a community. And we're still struggling. Yeah, the first month we were here, we did have like, there was like, during the, all the hours we were allowed to be here, there was like a big tent with big signs. There was like a, a library. The information yeah, table, yeah. what happened yeah, yeah. to that? Yeah. Why is that yeah. not going we on We talked anymore. about it at the last GA, and they're going to try to like, it's in somebody's storage somewhere. You yeah, know, yeah. All this, you know, crowdsourced resources. It all come out in We're going to bring it one back. We're just so going to bring it back. The full timers are going to bring it back um, since they're here. All, they're the only ones here all the time. And, uh, yeah, like, we've been really crippled by never being able to camp here. You know, if I, if, if we were able to camp in that first month, I would have spent, like, five days a week here. I would have been here. Yeah, you know what at the least. pro-choice people, people do in Davis. Long Beach? Mm -hmm. You know what in Long Beach, what the pro-choice people do? They go to every single hospital, and they have older people, not younger people, only older people, and they have all these dolls that are ripped up, and they painted blood all over the dolls. And they put, they park their car right here in front, like that one, they pile the dolls on top of the hoods of their cars. So when you go by the hospital and you walk down those hospital doors, you see it. It's the most disgusting thing. That's the anti-choice, mm -hmm. not the pro-choice. I mean, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I get it mixed up. Yeah. 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 Sorry, 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 sorry. I believe in abortion. I believe in abortion. Okay, I believe in no, the, it, choose not. Yeah, yeah. 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 What they do, I mean, they have such a stuff. presence when you come out of the hospital. Because the hospital door is like, say, where that tall building is, right? And the cars are here, but they have to go through that main parking lot to get out. That is awesome. And you see everything. You know, you see everything going on. You, you know there's I think you might need only be five people at a time. Be in a minute. But that car makes not. such an impact. Okay, you know, okay, okay. It has okay. a sign on the okay. car, and those stupid dolls. And I've gotten so many arguments with those people that I wish I were a woman and I'd have an abortion every other year. <laughs> nah. <laughs> okay, well, you see, you see where I'm trying to go. Yeah. We cannot get focused down and lost in any one individual issue to the exclusion of all the others. Everything has to fit into the whole picture. And what I'm looking for is big picture items. We have so many small picture items, so many individual issues, so many people with things that they want to do and should do and got to do that the big picture gets lost and we have nothing to say other than we have a thousand different things we'd like to do. Take a pick. Pick your own, take, take a choice, or bring another one in so we can have a thousand and one. I think we need to go in the other direction and start developing a cohesive, coherent, authentic, emotional message that speaks for us all and reaches other people without them having to go through reference materials or read 1,500 pages, but it's just there for them to see and, and hear. What if we had like a protest of in front of the state capitol on the street like during rush hour with signs of like come to our general assemblies we do it better or something yeah, yeah, like that. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay i want to i want to hear from um, new new country i i well this discussion the discussion was going on i wrote a mini book that are, it's only like two pages long. okay fire um it says all about occupy okay a lot of people don't really know <coughs> louder what, a lot of people don't really know what Occupy is really about. Well, it's basically a movement where trying, where we're trying to change the world. The people who don't know what Occupy is about probably haven't been here. So give it a try. We won't make fun of you. <coughs> Help us out. Ask yourself, do you like the one person stealing your job and home? It all starts with you and a little movement to change the world. Yeah. Hey. Thank you very so much. Cool. If somebody made a Thank little you very much. t-shirt and had her wear it to school. Because all the kids are going to ask her what it is. She and does and have, because when back last fall, that was mm -hmm. one of the activities they had going on. They had t-shirt making and she she's got a couple shirts I made that one that says Occupy we Sacramento we're the 99% she does wear them to school I have one that says um, 
ask me what occupies about that's two. Great. That's great. Yeah. Nice. That's you know what? Do you want to... Is it okay if I, if I borrow that from you for a week and scan yeah. it? And then maybe give it to the people to put on the website? I don't really have the good handwriting, but sure. She, she'll oh, work on it. I promise. I promise I will bring it back and sing it. It brings up one issue, one of my favorite issues. Children's citizenship. Mm -hmm. I think the children should be citizens and that they should not be second-class citizens. And I think this young lady ought to be able to vote. She should be able to pass a, some kind of test in her class, whatever, that shows that she's sufficient because she is smarter than a lot of adult, adults I know that have the right to vote all the time. And, and I'd like to see <laughs> citizenship extended down to children so that they are included more in society and so that they cannot be abused and hit. Because you notice, you can't walk up to somebody and smack them in the face if you don't like what they're doing. But you can with a child. Why is that? Because they are second-class citizens and, and what? The Constitution doesn't apply to them. So anyway, I think you are like an example of how children should be paid more attention to, listened to more, and given more opportunities to participate in the democracy, and invited to participate in it. He has a distraction form that can pull out one of those. <laughs> and it's all, uh, young people also have amazing leverage to speak truth to power. You know, like just generally young people are less, you know, ingrained in, in whatever they've well, learned, absolutely. ideologies over the over the years, and but but man, it's it's great if you got a couple cameras in a hearing room and the politicians with their money from lobbyists, and the kid just says, "Wait a minute, this is blindingly obvious," you know. <laughs> and it's very hard to shout yeah, down a kid. You young whippers. Yeah. 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 Uh, never mind. Have a reading of right and put it on YouTube. You know, it just yep. on that's a good idea. Oh, uh, I'd be happy to post that video. Yeah. Just the, the one yeah. minute to my have, clip. Yeah. yeah, just have the Occupy t-shirt, have her reading from a little piece of paper and that you can see it and have her saying it and, you know, it's going to get up there and people are going to copy it and copy it and you can see that. I mean, once you get, that might be one, one thing to do. There's That's another thing we've been talking about is we've got eight hours of tape from all four groups and we've been trying to think about the possibility of uh, editing it down to kind of show what what this was about, and what we were talking about, why who, and what, and why, as another illustration of what uh, Occupy is about, and uh, what the Vision Group is about. And I think, frankly, I think we're on the cutting edge of something. I, I watch what the other occupations are doing, and we are right on the cutting edge of defining ourselves in a way that is meaningful and cohesive and can be and kind of spread. That we've we're getting past the occupation into now we are, we want to occupy more and spread the message of occupy and make people understand what we're trying to do. End some of the confusion because media really has muddied the water and confused and thrown in crazy things and pulled and Andrew Breitbart is there calling us rapists every day and unless we fill in the gaps that's the way people see it. So that's our job. I was, I was, I was, I was what you're saying. And yeah, something that bothers you. The way that you're saying it, I, I appreciate the heart of what you're saying, but the way that you're saying it, if, if somebody approached me and said, I'm going to make you understand, and this is what your society is uh -huh. going to look like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I would okay. turn away and say, forget it. Well, of course, of you course. know, telling me what my new world is going to be isn't, it isn't the same thing as if you're going to make me understand or do you want to invite me? Well, I don't want to make anybody yeah. understand. So I want to so, offer alternatives to people. Yeah. You know, I, offer I, reasonable up alternatives that they maybe have never had a chance to even think about before yeah. because our politics is so narrow and so constricted. And I think it's Occupy's job to open it up and talk about the things that people don't talk about. Invite dialogue. Isn't Absolutely, it? inviting. That's automatic. You say, what do you think? What do you think about what we just said? Come on down. You got an idea? Please. That's what we're all about. You, 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 everybody. And that's what's different about us. And I certainly don't want to ruin that. I, I know my passion gets in the way and I start, nah, nah, nah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
I get it. Uh, it's just uh, childlike enthusiasm, and I, I expect the community to correct me and say, David, cut that out. You know, there you go again. You're, you know, get a grip. That's a buzzword on resumes now, too. Help me, help me when I, you know. Is that? It's a buzzword on resumes. On resumes? I always try to keep so always, you know, always about passionate, or you have a passion for this. And, but you know what I was thinking the other day? You said to me there's a budget. I actually know somebody who makes buttons. Have you thought about making buttons? I just say, like, really what you really said, really. what is Occupy Sacramento, or what is? I mean, if you had a budget, you could get someone to design them and create this person, and either give them out or sell them, and you get a donation, like a dollar or something. And if everyone's wearing one, and you see them, and you see somebody at Safeway, you see somebody at Grocery Outlet, you see somebody over here, then you start, like you, you mentioned Plasper. My doctor's actually in Lincoln. And the people that work there live over here on G Street. And I go on the, I take their public transportation. So if I were to wear some kind of thing that's an Occupy Sack, we know someone's going to make a comment to me. But I take four different buses to get, <clears throat> to get there. It's not pretty. Why should three buses in there? What do you, you, you call your metro system here? Um, that might be one way. But it might not be too expensive. And they might speak really loudly. You're a, you've got so many good ideas. Yeah. Hope we're all writing this down. <laughs> Hope somebody's taking this all down. This was made by a group of high school students. What does it say? It's an O with a Q and the pi symbol. Oh, 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 <laughs> that's clever, yeah. I got a half moon, but it's good. I got one. You won't get it back. Uh, look at that. Yeah, I think I'll have some. Oh, the, the, but from a, from a distance, Brilliant. just people passing by, they're going to think it's an O for Obama. They're not going to get it. I didn't get it. I mean, if you have, she's your daughter, right? Explain mm -hmm. it. Maybe if you even had some little buttons, they don't have all the buttons be the same, but maybe have one little button with her picture on it, and like wearing an Occupy t-shirt, that's going to say something too. The kids are in Yeah. There's so many different designs you can have. You don't have to have one. There's but actually... Yeah. That would be really cute. I, mean, I think it would. Yeah. Um, well, I've got two things to say. First of all, my teacher's with Occupy. Good. He actually, um, she actually gave me a... Uh, bumper sticker to give to my dad that said a lot about Occupy and the Oh, it said Stand with Wisconsin. Oh. It said Stand with Wisconsin and it said We are the 99%. Where did I put that, Jay? I don't know. You had it. Is it in the if car? If you don't want it on your car, I'll take it. I got so anyway, um, there's this, also this site um, for shirts that you can um, design a shirt. You can say Occupy or Put a face on it or anything, and um, you just press send to I forget what what number or whatever, and um, and it'll get sent to your house and you can wear it. See that that's a good idea. But well, what you can do is you can go to another group, and that's what I did in San Diego since we didn't have the logos or anything dragged up. I got it. Um, I got the actual camera ready photo that they use, you know, for the different camera ready. And I took their logo and I found a local person to make the t-shirts. And they made them and we sold them for ten dollars a piece. Do you have someone who's yeah. doing who's making uh, he's actually like getting shirts from yes. thrift stores and then like using a local screen printer, who's doing it like pro bono essentially? Oh, yeah. oh sorry. <laughs> I have a friend that works at I, I used to volunteer at the SPCA thrift store. And one of my best friends works at the Salvation Army. And sometimes they have 99 cents things. And sometimes when I go in there, I'm not going to say she is, I might go in there and spend $20. And it might come to two. She brings it out. But it's just, that is a good thing to do. You know, turn them inside out or whatever. And just cut the label off. There's a free t-shirt right there. More ideas. More ideas. Mountain of ideas. I, I am definitely wanting a t-shirt. I know. That's yeah, that's you just get a bunch of the t-shirts real cheap and just cut the logo off and turn them inside out. And then, but, but you got to get the, the right camera ready art. If, or, I mean, you can write on there, but it just doesn't look professional. You want them to make it look like you're organized. Because if you're organized, you're going to attract. If you have a handwritten sign sometimes, it's cute for kids, but not so much for adults. I like the handwritten ones, though, I do, because but, they're are we all right? 
Yeah, she just doesn't want to be filmed. I just wanted to reassure oh, oh, that I'd edit her out. And make oh, sure oh yeah. Wasn't it. But like, sometimes you need to have something that looks real professional to grab people in there to make it look like you know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know? Did you say the SPCA is also? No, this one. Oh, yeah. No. My daughter works at the SPCA. Well, I'm, I'm still attracted by the uh, Occupy Farm. And uh, a kind of a colloquium where we get 50 tents and a bandstand and a volleyball court and whatever, and we invite everybody in the West to show up and participate in this development of the Occupy movement. And Woodstock 2012, kind right of. the hell yeah. on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can't even do something through a coffee shop. You know, there's a coffee shop over here, with, I forget the name of it, but it's, it's kind of a punky looking thing by a tattoo shop by on Broadway. Can I finish my ID? I thought you were done, I'm sorry. Something else? Uh -huh. <laughs> sorry. I just ramble. I know, you, you're a fountain of ideas. You are. I ramble. But I'm not sure how realistic it is. Actually, we already have some kind of farm activity that's yes. already going on. I don't really know too much about it. But that's one of the vision things that attracts me, the idea of forming that community, that yeah, active yeah. community that we could I'm not form in the tents. We just, we missed out on it. And I like the idea that we can replicate it ourselves without the confrontation, without the pepper spray, with the, you know, with the cooperation of the all the powers that be, but then we have the symposium that attracts from all over, that is that goes for a few months, that has music and movies and, you know, that's this kind of active center of thought and, you know, like, a, what do they call them, think tanks, you know, yeah. we'd be the Occupy, the Western Occupy Symposium and Think Tank. And every day we'd be working on this. How do we impact? How do we make a difference? How are we going to change? How can we come together more? What do we want to teach? What do we want to learn? And I, you know, it's so hard to do it like this. It would be so much easier if the bus come here and then everybody goes to the farm. Well, now, there, isn't there, there a farm? Isn't there a farm? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I haven't seen how it's set up and whether there'd be a place we could set up 50 tents and whether we could build a band. There's a lot of space. There's, there's a possibility yeah. we could do this. Yeah, thing. yeah. There's already a, a bunch of people living there. There's like a few buildings that just like aren't being used and they're being lived in by occupiers who are right. there like working on the farm. Yes, and spawn ranch. Is that where, <laughs> is that where <laughs> a lot of the people that used to be down here at the park, is that where some, they are some now? Of them. Some, some of them. Some of them. So yeah. like if we yeah. went out there, we'd see some familiar faces? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Danny is one of them. We used yeah. to be here but all that, the time. That idea yeah. is kind of germinating and I think that's... That's kind of fantastic. So yeah. where's this place at? Yeah, I mean, uh, Garden Highway the up by the airport. airport. Oh, that's not far at all, then. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's easy to get Field there. Field Bend Golf Course. It's just Garden like, Highway. Drive in a wedge. <laughs> I mean, now, like, you know, if, say, you know, like, say, if I just wanted to go up there and check it out, would would they, you know, would would they be welcomed? Uh, no, or, I'm sure. I'm sure. Or would occupied. they? Or would they go... Yeah, no, you know, only certain people are out here. And, you know, yeah, it's very, like, they want more people out there helping yeah. and everything. I so want to check this any, thing any out sometime this week. Yeah, okay, Garden out. Highway. Yeah. So, <laughs> I would take five north toward Saturday. the airport, yeah. right? That's it's going to be. Yeah. Saturday, yeah. next Saturday, after, after the, the after the strategy, the strategy forum, there's a big forum, party there, yeah. There's going to be Some a big music playing. and things and dancing. Right, and I, I am there. So, be there, <laughs> be there. I am there. Taya, where are Oh, I wish Marcy was going to be off next Saturday. I'm going to take, take her to that. She's out of work next Saturday. Yeah. That's how serious I am. What time of day is it? Probably find a ride. That'll be... Probably five-hour meeting from ten to something. Maybe evening, eight o'clock, maybe. That's well, we might have to take separate cars. I don't know. I am so going to that. I think that's Definitely. Like that's <laughs> that is that is so old school. That is. <laughs> that's he's from down your with childhood. It. I think he's down yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's well, a great idea. Well, 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 well. Great idea, but I'm almost wondering if if you kind of just started like. 
small to get the attraction of the people. Like maybe a lot of coffee shops here, coffee shops here do benefits. Like they just did one for local bands over at the one I was talking about. And if you generate and get just you know you start small, then the next one's bigger, then the next one's bigger, then you're really going to get people to go out to a bigger place. You know, you got to get a coffee shop that agrees with you or like Old Soul or something or somebody that is into it. I'm yeah. just thinking, you know, you know, it's, it's like a Rolling Stone. You're going to be gathering that moss, and the bigger. Well, we're already in this process. Of yeah. Okay, a here's farm. the it's not thing. Like, uh, it's it's up high in the sky. This is already happening. Oh no, I know it's happening, but I'm and just. We're thinking... not going to back off and say, well, no, 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 let's go over here. No, no, leave that there, but just get smaller. Just... Here's the thing, oh, though, it's... about the. It's very hard to get people to buy into any idea, to gather together, to commit themselves to it, to go there, to show up. It's very easy to come up with an idea, yeah. but it is very difficult to actually execute it. I mean, I see that in operation all the time. People come up with a brilliant idea, and that's the last you hear of it. Ideas are cheap. It's how it's they're executed, cheap. how they kind of fit it's into the cheap. politics of this movement, how they are integrated with what's going on. And it just can't be coming up with one idea, one good idea after another, because that's what we're all doing, what everybody's sort of doing. Yeah. We have to somehow become more cohesive, more coherent, more fixed. And, you know, I think we're on the process. But it just can't be by coming in with more and more and more ideas. We have to start shaping and forming you what know, we've already decided on. And I'm not criticizing you, but I'm... Well, I understand completely. I, your impulse is to get specific, get an idea, get... Let's get down there tomorrow and start doing something, not just talk about something that might happen in a week or a month. Or, no, I like, you know, we I can get wanna, people to out. come out. We can get people to come out to the farm if you know if we kind of if we kind of soft pitch it like not too politically. If we go like, yeah, come on out. There's gonna be music. There's gonna be food. There's gonna be hot babes walking around. You know, there's gonna be it's gonna be a party. It's gonna rock. And then you know, and then and yeah, and then they come out. And then they and then they kind of get the message by accident. And the GA is at five o'clock. That's actually the that is the agenda. It's gonna be mostly a party. There's yeah. gonna be like a couple. There's gonna be one like speech on foreclosure since his farm like it is a foreclosure battle. And yeah. there's gonna be one quick thing on NDAA. But yeah. other than that, it's all music and party. So yeah. it, it really is. You gotta get so like we tell the, the you know the college students and whoever we say like yeah come on out yeah. you know that's true. There's the, 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 that's just come on out it's gonna be a party. My friends who are just fucking yeah. come on down. Uh, come see that's why I'm saying why are people like college inclusive like a 65th in university. Not 65th. Uh, when you go to the college, you take the bus. I mean, if there were a table there or something, at certain times of day, you know, the students come. I, uh, we've got outreach got to almost every. But see, I've never seen it. That's a whole thing. I know, yeah. but that's the part of that thing. People have great ideas. People have wonderful ideas. If they are not organized, executed, yeah. put together with several people who are committed and are willing to put in the time and the effort, then it's just another idea that pings off. Well, hey. so my oldest daughter's husband is some kind of top secret guy in the Navy. He can't talk about what he does or anything. And if like, you know, if he, he can get dishonorably discharged for even telling Jessica, my daughter, his wife, if he, like, if he even talks to his wife about where his ship's going or what he's doing, you know, although I'm sure he does, but like, he could be dishonorably discharged for saying anything about what his job in the Navy is. And so I wonder if, like, you know, I wonder if they've done some kind of background check on the family and found out that that we're hippies and we're, you know, counterculturists and, and we're not we're not down with their militaristic agenda. Okay, I don't know. Well, they let him in the navy. They let him. They let him. Well, yeah, that was. They decided we're all right. I already told my cousin. I copied. I copied off that card. Things I've done.